today I thought it'd be fun if we dipped back into Reddit and we checked out what kind of things Americans went, what the f I choose to censor that, when they arrived in Europe. I always find these really cool because it's sort of other people's perspectives and then I just get to comment on what my perception of how they actually are is. Are. Is. Before I get into the video, aside from subscribing, which if you don't, you'll die. I think she went a bit too far. I'd like to take the time to acknowledge my patrons and I'll do a couple of shout outs at the end of the video, but I have been on Patreon two years. It has changed my entire life. To celebrate two years, personally, I finally got around to getting the one thing that I have needed really since day one. And actually it's a gift for editor Diane. She's absolutely delighted. I've never seen her happier. I'm delighted. This is me delighted. Thank you so much, Patreon. And if you like me, I guess, and wanna see more of my face, you can do it there. Irish people, not generally great at self-selling, but yeah. Okay, coming in at number 10, the first WTF moment that an American had in Ireland was noticing that the cows are fluffy and that the sheep are spray painted. Yes, that's true. The cows that are fluffy are actually, I think, Highland cows from Scotland, but obviously they're great, so we have them here. Can you tell I don't know anything about cows? I don't know anything about cows, but they are fluffy compared to the ones that I saw in Texas, which are not fluffy, so. Cow knowledge. We spray paint our sheep, not my sheep, I don't have any sheep, but people who have sheep spray paint their sheep because it's common for sheep to go wandering and if you have the spray paint with the orange V, you know that's your sheep. Those are the sheep with the purple butterfly. Those are Nigel's sheep. But some people go mad spraying the sheep and they just spray them all over. So it's for identifying them and in case you're wondering, before you're allowed to trade the wool, I believe that it has to go through some kind of chemical process anyway which gets rid of the dye so yeah next up this person says they saw 2000 year old roman columns everywhere there's just generally old stuff and somebody very funnily commented you saw a bird table that's hilarious yes in ireland and across europe there is stuff that is older than america our buildings are very old in ireland happening upon a castle it's not uncommon some of our pubs are older than your country our schools are older than your country it's just been around a really long time. But the funny thing about when Americans come over and acknowledge it and how amazing it is, it kind of, I feel, makes me feel like I'm a small child being drugged around a museum. Wow, this is amazing. And I'm like, oh yeah, no it is, it's great. It's such an old book, really old, wow. We just see it every day. It's not exceptional to us, <laughs> it's just, yeah, we have old stuff. It's really old, lots of history there, very romantic. The next person says, every meal takes three hours and another person replied, try getting your bill. Okay, this is less the case in big chain restaurants, but still not, not the case in big chain restaurants. I have noticed in America, your service is efficient and you guys have told me in comments this because they want to turn over the table fast and get it to another customer. But indeed in Europe, including Ireland, our table service can be very slow. There are times I have sat there having requested the bill and said, if this bill isn't on the table in the next five minutes, I'm going to walk out and leave and they can stop me and I'll pay them. I've never actually had the balls to do it, but a lot of times I've felt that way. Like I just want to just leave because I'm just there waiting and I'm in a hurry. But yeah, table service is a lot more relaxed in Europe. Ain't nobody going anywhere. There's no rush. People like to enjoy their meal. And here's the thing, especially about restaurants in Ireland, they're trying to sell you alcohol over food. For the restaurant, an alcoholic beverage will earn them a lot more money because they upsell it. So the longer you sit there, the more inclined you are to order drinks. So that's their whole shtick. The next thing a person said was that they noticed that the tap water is the cleanest, best tap water in the world, but people called it toilet water and nobody drank it. Yeah, that's very accurate. So our water in Ireland is drinkable. You can drink it straight out of the tap, no problem. But some people think that tap water doesn't necessarily smell that great or taste that great. I have recently begun to kind of feel I understand this and I've been drinking bottled water more. But at the same time, I also feel maybe I've been brainwashed. There is nothing wrong with our water. We can drink it out of the tap. We're very lucky, but we are also snobby. So a lot of people drink bottled water or Coca-Cola, which is also a valid choice. We should just drink it out of the tap because we're very fortunate and gifted to have it. But commercialism just makes me want to buy the water and drink it like that. So 
I am but a zombie living in a capitalistic society. Uh, the next person said the littering surprised them and in a lot of places, especially in Germany. I don't know about Germany, I have never been there, um, but I will say in Ireland I am frequently shocked by the littering that we have in society. There is a couple of things you could blame for this, like for example, you can go miles and not come across a bin anywhere, or as some of you know it, a trash can. However, this is also the case I believe in Italy where they put the onus of responsibility onto the people visiting the beach and don't provide any bins and they just presume people have to take their trash with them when they leave. I was recently appalled after lockdown began to open up parks in Ireland. There was just stuff from the petrol station all over the park. They just put their rubbish all over the ground. And there are bins, there are bins everywhere. I also recently saw somebody throwing something out the window of their car. I'm not a big huge eco person. You should recycle, but it's not taking up my entire brain. But to see somebody just throwing litter on the ground, is just, it's mind boggling. In contrast, when I was in Santa Barbara at the Independence Day celebration, both Eleni and I remarked on how incredibly clean it was. Now maybe that was just Santa Barbara. There are probably places in America where people are a bit worse with throwing their rubbish on the ground. But yeah, in Ireland and I guess Europe, we really need to get a lot better at litter because it's Disgraceful. The next one says that they were in Spain as an exchange student and they got given a pill in the EOR that got rid of their illness in 24 hours. This is an interesting one because I remember getting really, really sick when I went to New York years ago, long before the channel. I picked up a virus. I ended up staying in the hotel for the entirety of the trip, but I did make a trip to the pharmacy to pick up some stuff and I picked up what I thought was just general paracetamol is what we'd call it, and ibuprofen. I think you guys have other names for it in the States. It was weak AF, really weak. I ended up needing like four of them to do the job of one. Now, in contrast, Spain's pills are really strong. Like when I go over there, I need one pill, where in Ireland I'll need two pills. They are not afraid to over the counter that stuff to you. No fear at all. They seem to trust people with giving them really strong medicine. And it doesn't seem like there's a huge problem in their country by doing that. I don't know, I find it interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments because I'm curious to see your perspective on the whole sitch. Next up a person says, people were walking around blackout drunk and nobody did anything. They thought to themselves, were they gonna leave this person on the side of the walkway? I've noticed in America, generally speaking, people get tipsy, whereas in Ireland, we will get absolutely obliterated. And sometimes you go a bit too far, it happens. When that happens, you hope your friends are around to look after you. Now, the person in this comment says that somebody was just left blackout drunk passed out on the sidewalk. My inclination would be to think that the guards have been called at this stage. People don't just leave people there. You might be afraid that they might retaliate violently or something like that. So generally, people will keep safe distance, call the police, and keep an eye on the person. Sometimes people will intervene. You just gotta weigh up the situation. And finally, this one makes me laugh. This person said that they were in Ireland, they went through customs and the agent asked, was it business or personal? They replied personal and the agent replied, oh yeah, what's up? And he said, visiting in-laws. First time in Ireland, yes sir. And the agent supposedly replied, feckin' A. Well, why are you standing around? Go get pissed. This is so bang on. Uh, generally speaking in Ireland, authority figures tend to be quite laid back if you're not doing anything wrong. So you will get this kind of very relaxed attitude from people. And I you know, I think it's quite nice and pleasant to have. Let me know below in comments if you yourself visited Europe and what your WTF moment actually was. Am I naff calling it a WTF moment? Is that? I don't know, I don't care. You can think I'm naff. As I mentioned, shout out to a couple of patrons today. The first patron who was super cool is Kevin Zwigger and Kevin has started his own TikTok under Velcro Yuppie. I've started getting into TikTok recently. It is good fun, it's just silly, I like it. It's just, you can take your mind away from all the craziness. Thank you, Kevin, and go check out his TikTok. Next up, Chip Parmley wants to shout out his dad. I believe it's Father's Day coming up in America. Chip says he's actually older than his father when this picture was taken and that he will never be that cool. I don't know, Chip, I think you're pretty cool. Thank you so much to Chip. And finally, the last shout out goes to Jason Moore. This is a picture of his late father who passed in 2014. This photo was taken in 2007. Jason just wanted to share a little something to commemorate Father's Day. Thanks, Jason. And yeah, shout out to all the good dads out there. Good dadding, keep it up. That's it for today's video. I'll see you on the other side. Bye. Turn around the tables, turn over the tables, turn it.
words today. We're having trouble with words. You, you can check out Patreon. You, you can do that. If you want. It's no pressure. You, you can do what you want. Anyway, do you want to come be in the video? You don't even have to be asked twice. You're in great form today, aren't you? You were running in the park and your paws are all dirty. What else? Did you get treats? You did. Oh no, he thinks he's getting one there. Okay. One feature for the good boy. Good boy. Thank you, you did a great job in the video today. Good job. Boop.